Hi everyone, um, my name is Adrian, um, and I'm here to talk to you about conquering Kubernetes with Emacs. And I hesitated a long time whether or not I was going to spell conquering with a K and get the, the alliteration going, you know. But uh, in the end, it's mostly a clickbaity title. Uh, we're going to talk, yes, about Kubernetes, but it's going to be a lot of Emacs dealing with external processes and what, what role does Kubernetes stand in there. So let me start quickly why I'm here, why I started with this talk. I started because I have a specific annoying workflow problem. When I started at my current company, the company was fully on Kubernetes, and I was a little bit confused. I've never used Kubernetes before, and, and I was wondering how things worked. So just out of show of hands, who here has heard of Kubernetes? All right, who here has used Kubernetes? Who here can define what Kubernetes is? Yeah, that, that sounds about right. I don't know either, but <laughs> basically, let's have some gross approximation of what it is. It's a, serve, a system that allows you to control a wide range of, uh, of types of services. And basically, if you have a ton of servers running, if you have a bunch of pods, a bunch of things, Kubernetes allows you to control the deployments, the replicas, the kind of environment variable. It's very flexible, very complex, very heavy extremely interesting and you can spend a lot of time digging into it. But specifically, when I started working with it, my question was, how do I see the logs for the servers I'm responsible for? And it's, it's really simple. Like, so here's a shell. Let's just clear it up. Everybody can see the bottom of my screen? Yeah? yeah. So in Kubernetes, you list your pods or servers, however you want to describe it here. You do kubectl or kube control, depending on who you want to annoy. Uh, cube control get pods. And so that gives you a bunch of running services. So I have a, a local Kubernetes running here, and I just put some demo pods in there. I have a Redis, I have something called Hello Node, and some front end stuff that I took from the Kubernetes tutorial. And say I want to see the pods of a particular service, I now have to do again kubectl logs, and then I have to go in and high select text. There we go. If it's painful, if it looks painful, it is. And then put in there and bam, I get like a bunch of logs for my Redis instance. So that's how you typically look at pods, look at logs in Kubernetes. So it's very annoying. You have to list the services and you copy paste. You put them in, in, the, in another command, which is again, can be more complex because you can have namespaces and context in Kubernetes. So you, your command can get really long. And I think that for stuff as basic as listing your logs or making sure everything is running okay, you want to make that as simple as possible. It shouldn't be a trouble for me to look at my logs. Or I'm going to be less tempted to do it, and then that makes me a worse programmer. Also, I have to use a mouse in the middle. Like, who does that? I, I might as well go back to Microsoft Word to editing code. I didn't say go back. Um, so that's the problem. Now, what's the solution? The solution is Emacs. That's why we're here. Uh, but specifically, why, why would I make some interfaces for Kubernetes in Emacs. So obviously I want to streamline this workflow and I want to learn more about Kubernetes, see what I can do with it. There's already a Kubernetes extension for Emacs that's out there, that's great. The problem is it doesn't work for me and probably won't work for a bunch of people because the permissions are pretty greedy. If you don't have full access right to your Kubernetes cluster, a lot of things will break. So that was my case, so I couldn't use that. And then at the end of the day, we want to bring everything in Emacs. That's everyone's goal. Everybody's clear on that? All right. So one of the things that I discovered on my, on my journey to get my logs from Kubernetes inside Emacs, what are the key takeaways from this, why you should listen to me? So I'm gonna, I derived a major mode, which I didn't know how to do before. Uh, I learned about interacting with sub-processes in a meaningful way in Emacs. And then I found a lot, and I looked around a lot in the Emacs ecosystem on how to do, provide some meaningful user experience, something better than just like what's out there in like shell completion or whatnot. Anybody has questions on what we're gonna see? Pressing question on Kubernetes before we get started. No? So that's pretty much all the Kubernetes concepts you need to follow that talk. Now we're gonna go into something much easier, which is Emacs Lisp. <laughs> all right. So, Let's talk a little bit about listing pods. The first part is I want to get the list of pods so I can select which one I want to see the logs from. So the requirements as I get the pods, 
with some naive processing, it doesn't really matter how performance that is. I dump that list into something appropriate in Emacs, and then maybe I derive that into my own major mode, so I can quickly summon it and, and put it up. So what's the command to, to get pods? I just run it, but it's kube control, kubectl get pods. I run that, I have my list of pods. And yes, in case you're wondering, I'm going to do the entire talk in, in org mode and try to be interactive and show some code. It's the easiest I found. So first pass as, mes as messaging that. The idea is we take this output from kube control and we're going to dump it in Emacs somehow. So the first pass is I'm going to do some dirty shell trick. I'm going to do get pods, remove the headers, remove the top line, and I'm going to keep only the pod names. So I'm going to use arc and just keep the first column. So this is just some dirty bash tricks to get the work done. So I run this, bam, I now have a single column of pods. Now, how do I get that into Lisp, into a Lisp string? So there's this fancy command, this fancy Emacs Lisp function called uh, shell command to string, where essentially you give it a command and it's gonna return the string output of that command. So if I run it here, I have my long, this long string, and you see that there's a lot of things happening here, but mostly I have all my pod list and I have those backslash ends in between, which are the new lines in shell. So that's now a Lisp string. How do I turn that into a Lisp list? Lisp list. Try that one. It's, it's. So again, I'm going to use another function. It's the split string function. Split string to get a Lisp list. I practiced. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to split the string at every new line, and that's going to give me a Lisp list. Let's do this. Bam, I have my list. You notice, if you're, if you're very careful, at the very end I have some empty string. I actually don't care about it. Like in, in proper way, you should remove it, but for now let's just leave it here. It's not going to harm us. So now I have a nice list, and I want to make it interactive. I want the user to be able to select one of the components. There are multiple ways to do that. But what I really like is the built-in tabulated list mode in Emacs. So it's a great major mode if you have like a CSV. If you have columns of data and you want to represent that in Emacs and being able to interact with it. The problem is that the documentation is a teeny bit uh, abrupt. So it took me a while to, to figure out exactly what it requires to, to work. So first, you need to define some columns by passing a vector where each element is the name and the width. So this is an example. I say I'm going to make two columns, column one, column two. They're both going to be 50-50. I'm not totally sure what the units are, maybe percent. I don't know. It works. So that's the first step to determining a, to using tabulated list mode. Then the rows is a little bit more hairy, but you need to pass a list of lists where the first each element has an ID and then a vector of values. And the ID is not particularly useful here, uh, so I'm going to leave it as nil. What really, matter, what really matters is the vector of values. So that's every row of it. So here, I'm going to have two columns, column one, column two, both going to be 50 and 50. And then I'm going to have row one, value one, row two, value two, row three, value three. So that's how you define your data. And then I put everything together, and I'm going to dump it into tabulated list mode. So same code. I just copy-pasted the code from before. I have my column definition, my three rows. And I'm going to set my column, set my entries, print my <coughs> header, and print my list. All right, let's hope this works. Yeah, because this is also mostly live coding, so let's, let's all pray a little bit. All right. So it works. I just ran this, and I'm now you can see I have this header that I cannot get to, and I have this, this rows and values. So that's simple tabulated list mode. Let's come back. All right. So now we know how to use tabulated list mode, and we know how to get a Lisp list of Kubernetes pods. Let's combine the two together. So it's pretty much the same code as before, just merged together. I am only going to have a single column that I'm going to call pod that I put at width of 100. And then I am dumping in the rows 
the split string lisp of pods in there. And then I'm just printing my tabulated list. So let's try that. And now, here we go, tabulated list with a list of pods. So I have my three pods in a nice, nice format. Everybody's happy. Questions on that? No, all right. I'm going to assume everybody, everybody got that now. So that's great. We know how to combine the tabulated list and the shell commands to the string. Now, let's make a major mode out of this. And, and that's actually, it was actually really easy. I'm using the define derived mode. So the way this works is you say, I want to define a new major mode. I'm going to base myself on an existing major mode, and I'm just going to add some new functionalities to it. So here I'm saying I'm going to define Kubernetes mode from tabulated list mode. It's going to be called Kubernetes. You pass some doc string, and then here's my body. Here's what I want to happen when that mode is triggered. And that's the same code that's printing the tabulated list. And then at the bottom, I made an uh, interactive function to, to summon this, the Kubernetes function. So let's try it. I'm going to execute this code. So from now on, I should be able, I can test it out immediately. So if I do meta x Kubernetes, bam, I just created. And you can see at the bottom, that's my major mode. So we now have Kubernetes major mode defined. All clean, I can do the first, the first third of my problem in Emacs. All right, so now let's tackle the second third. Checking on time, all right. So I want to be able to list logs. So we have a list, we have tabulated lists. I want to be able to choose the row that interests of me and then get the logs for that, for, for that part. Oh, there we go. The, so the requirements are, I need those logs to not hang Emacs. I need, I need, sometimes pods have hundreds and hundreds of lines of code. I want to be able to deal with a sub-process, and I want to redirect the output of a buffer. And there's an extra thing that you can do also in Kubernetes is you can tail logs. The same way you would do tail dash F, you can do Kubernetes log dash F. So it would be nice to be able to see live logs in Emacs, in an Emacs buffer, and not have uh, and not have Emacs hanging because of some thread issue or whatnot. So, as I said, the command to get logs is Kubernetes cube curl logs and then the pod name. Let's make sure it still works. All right, it still works. So that's my Redis logs. As you can see, there's the Redis logo on top and a bunch of logs saying it started. All right, so now why can't I just take this command and dump it into my shell command to string. Why, why won't the naive way work? Um, that's in some fine prose, it's, it's May performance. Uh, as I said, you can have a bunch of these logs. You can have hundreds and hundreds of lines, and that's gonna really kill your, your session in there. So I had to dig into how to properly interact with external processes and what actually the shell command to string function calls underneath. And so in Emacs, the proper way is to use the call process function. It's pretty simple. You pass it an executable you want to run. Then don't worry about this value. Then a buffer name, which I'm going to call logs. Then another value I don't care about. And then from there on, it's just a list of arguments. So what I want to run is logs and my pod name. It's going to dump that result into a buffer, and I'm just going to show that. So let's try it out. Let's see if it has the same effect. Yeah. So I just summoned to a brand new buffer called indeed kubectl logs, and I have my Redis logs in there. Now, I said we also have a dash f option to live follow those logs. How do we, how do, we do that? Because call process will just call the process, wait for it to terminate, and dump the, the output in a buffer. So there's a converse function or sister function uh, called start process, which is async. So this time you give it a process, a buffer, and your list of arguments. And process is just a unique string that Emacs will use to identify that. So I don't know if you've ever run like some LSP mode or uh, what else, like 
sometimes sometimes if you're running Maggit and uh, you kill you kill Emacs, it tells you, oh, Emacs has a process running. Do you want to exit? Yes or no. So actually, what's happening is that in the background, that extension use start process function to start a long live function, and Emacs will make sure that you actually want to terminate that. So we're doing the same thing here. I'm saying my process is going to be uh, kubectl. I'm going to dump the output to kubectl logs, and I'm going to run this function. So let's try it. So it looks the same. The difference is that if I try to kill it now, you see at the bottom it's telling me, oh, this is a running process. Are you sure you want to kill it? So that means that if my Redis were to go down or if I had any more logs, they would actually live appear on this screen right now, which is exactly what I want. So how do we combine these two functions and make it into, into something that I can summon? Uh, right? So this is my code for the function called Kubernetes get logs. So I'm using the optional argument. Um, I'll explain that in a second. And I'm saying either use start process or use call process. And, and that's exactly the same logs that I just, the same code that I just showed you. Uh, and the optional argument, if you're not familiar with it, some commands, you can just execute them from a key binding or calling them from MX, but they have a secondary, uh, I want to say effect or, uh, yeah, secondary effect if you use, if you do control U MX, and that's going to pass a, a next, an, extra, an extra argument into your function. So here I'm saying, if you don't pass, if you pass this extra argument, if you do CU MX Kubernetes get logs, it's going to be async. And if you just do MX uh, Kubernetes get logs is going to be sync. And that's something that I think is not used enough, but having the function with just a little bit of a different behavior, I, it's nicer to have this optional argument rather than like define a Kubernetes get logs sync and Kubernetes get logs async, which is a little bit too wordly in my opinion. So yeah, as I said, MX Kubernetes get logs or M CUMX Kubernetes get logs. So let's try it. Uh, -choo. all right. So Kubernetes get logs. All right. So this is my sync version. I know because if I try to kill the buffer, it dies instantly. Now let's try CU MX Kubernetes get logs. And now this is the async version. Uh, and if I try to kill the buffer, it's telling me you're running a process. Would you like to kill it? All right. Any questions on how we define this function in sync versus async? Yep. Thanks. So how do we connect this function to the major mode? Because in case you haven't noticed, I hard coded, I cheated, I hard coded my pod, my pod value in the function. So that's not going to work if my pod name changes, which it does all the time, every time you restart the pod. So we want to connect it to the major mode. And there we want, again, to come back to using tabulated list mode and the function that it provides. In tabulated list mode, you have access to this function called tabulated list get entry, which gives you the vector of values which is currently under your cursor. So if I were to run this, when my cursor is on this particular row of my Kubernetes mo mode, I'm going to get the pod name. So that's exactly what I did. Uh, I just redefine a little bit my Kubernetes get logs. And I'm saying, let's get the pod under the current cursor. I changed nothing else. And let's just uh, execute it. So let's see if that's work. All right. So let's test it out. So I summon Kubernetes. And now I'm going to do MX Kubernetes get logs, and it's going to show me the logs of this front-end pod, not the Redis logs anymore. And that's correct. We're seeing some totally different logs about Apache failing and whatever, what's new. If I go back to Redis, and now I do my control U MX Kubernetes get logs, I'm now back into my Redis logs, and I am still async. So my function works. So I successfully linked my function to tabulated list mode. Obviously, the downside now is that if I were to call uh, Kubernetes get logs outside of my Kubernetes mode, 
I'll have a problem. It'll raise an error. Actually, let's try it right now. I've never tried it. Kubernetes get log, yeah. So it says at the bottom, wrong type of argument, array nil p, because I'm not in tabulated list mode. But that's the function that I'm going to exploit. All right, let me drink some water. Anybody has questions in the meantime? Wonderful, I'm definitely not running out of material anytime soon. <laughs> so, now let's talk a little bit about modern UX. Um, and modern UX is a very subjective thing, but I don't like doing my MX Kubernetes and then selecting my pod and doing MX Kubernetes get logs or CU MX Kubernetes get log. That's, that's too many keystrokes. And so I looked out there what's an extension that deals with a very complicated command line tool and has a very interesting and very nice UI. Anybody wants to take a guess as to what that is? Oh. It's Magit, yeah. So how does Magit do it? We have a meaningful UI for users to interact with major modes and they use transient. So if you don't know, transient is the successor of um, Magit pop-up, I think it was called, which is essentially that little menu that pops up when you're in Magit and you decide to push your branch. And it's essentially a very nice menu which constructs, dynamically constructs uh, command line arguments for you. So we'll see exactly what that is. And it's a great project, uh, I love it. There is one teeny problem with it is I found the documentation, the manual, a teeny bit too dry. So actually I had to read a lot of Magit code to understand how transient was used. So I'm, I'm trying to condense that here with an example, what's a simple transient function. So I'm defining a test function that just prints test function. And then I'm defining this transient command, which is gonna have a test transient title, and then a bunch of actions. So like, okay, what is this? Let's, let's just run it and let's see what happens. Here we go. So you see, I just created this little menu at the bottom that has the actions that reflects here with a little a key binding and a full name. So what happens now if I press A is that it calls my test function. So essentially, it's a nice, it's a menu interface which can let users select functions with few, few keystrokes. And this define transient commands create this test transient function, which you can now call. The only uh, limitation is that you have to make sure that your test function is interactive, that you can call it from, from MX. So that's a simple transient to create a bunch of menus. Now, this is not a very interesting one because I'm always calling test function. What can we do with it? What's interesting with it? So for one, it's very easy to add switches. So if you do the dash F I was talking about, that's, that's a switch. You turn it on and off when you pass it in, uh, in the command line arguments. So I still have my test function. I modified it to get a list of arguments from transient using the transient arg function. I'm not sure how it works. I just copy pasted the code from Maggot. So then I still have my test transient that I'm going to redefine here. And I pass a bunch of arguments, dash s, dash a. And that's, those are just some random switches. And so what's going to happen when I run this is now I have this new argument section I only have a D action, I removed everything else. And so if I type dash S, I just triggered the S switch. So you can see it's currently highlighted. And if I do again like dash A, I triggered the second another switch, which I guess I should have called second switch. That would have made more sense. And now if I press D, the test function now prints the arguments that it was passed and it's it's an array with exactly those full values that I defined. So that's very useful to defining command line arguments. There's another thing that we can do, more complicated, is that we can pass some params in transient. We can, or rather, we can let users enter some arbitrary parameters. So maybe I should not show the code before saying things. It's very before saying things. It's very disruptive. But basically, when you do, uh, if you do, what's a good example? In the example of tail, you can precise how many lines you want to tail. So you can do tail, I think it's dash n equal something, something. So we want to be able to collect user input in those 
parameters. So I still have my test function, I didn't change it. And now I defined an infix argument, which is gonna be dash dash message. Uh, you give it a description, I don't know what that does short tag of dash m so that's going to be what the user selects to trigger that that parameter and the actual argument that's going to be passed to your function and then i just added this test transient dash dash message to my list of of uh, transient command and let's run it so i still have my switches that i can still trigger but now if i do dash m i now have this little uh, input in there and I can type whatever I want. Okay, so now as you can see, I'm locked in dash dash message equal hello. And if I press D, all my arguments with the user input were passed. I think, uh, so that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm a fan of this. And in case you're wondering, it also has memory. So if I do dash M again, it preserves my last input. Well, that's a really nice thing. And control G to quit. All right. So now we know how to define those nice menus, which I think makes a lot of sense in the context of what we want to do. What should be our transient, our Kubernetes transient menu? So we want to get logs, follow those logs with dash F. We want to be able to specify the tail length. Maybe I'm not interested in every single message that was ever published. Maybe I only want the last 100. And I want to be able to combine those. I want to be able to say, I want the last 50 message and keep tailing. So that's exactly what I did. We have the dash dash tail infix argument, which is exactly what it is. It's, then my transient is going to have the dash f as a simple switch, my tail infix, and then I'm going to have a single action for now. It's l to logs. And you see, I am triggering Kubernetes get logs on the l key. So let's try it. All right, that looks pretty good. So I have dash F, I can trigger that. I have dash TL, oh, here we go. And so I can specify I want 100 messages. And then I have L to finally trigger my Kubernetes get logs. Bam, error. We didn't connect everything together. So let's, let's try that. But at least it looks good. And that's what we want to do. So we now have to go back to update our Kubernetes get logs function to take those arguments from transient. So that's exactly what I did. We are reading those arguments the same way my test function was doing it from transient args passing it the, the Kubernetes transient. So now args is now a list of parameters and switches. Uh, the other thing I'm modifying, I'm making, I'm instead of uh, splitting my logic if you pass an optional argument or not, I'm looking if dash f is in the list of arguments. If you have it, uh, you want an async process. If you don't have it, you want the same process. Maybe there are better ways to do this, I'm not sure. And then at the end, I'm now passing those args, that arg list to my function. I don't have to worry, and it's also pretty neat because if you want to add some more arguments tomorrow to Kubernetes, if there's other option than dash f and tail that you want to add, you essentially don't have to modify that Kubernetes log function. You just have to modify your transient. So let's try it. All right, uh, last thing before we actually trigger this transient mode, we want to connect such that this transient is easy to pop up when we're in Kubernetes mode. And that's done easily by defining uh, a mode map. So my mode is called Kubernetes mode. So Emacs by default, if you define a Kubernetes mode map, is gonna assume that that's the key map you want to go by when Kubernetes mode is activated. So here I'm gonna define the L key to my transient. So if I do L, it's gonna show my transient. And from that on, if I do L again, it's gonna just show me the logs of a pod under the cursor. Let's try it. All right. Hopefully this works. We try everything out. Kubernetes. All right. So I select my pod, I'm under my Redis pod, and I'm not just gonna press L. It's undefined, wonderful. Uh, one second. Uh, Still undefined. Here we go. Ah, did not believe that worked. Uh, so 
I have my transient collected, connected. If I do L on top of my Redis pod, I have the options I just defined. I do L again, that's my Redis logs. Now let's try some switches. If I do L, tail, and I precise, I want only the last five lines. I'm not gonna have the Redis ASCII logo anymore. Let's do that. That seems to work. Let's combine everything. I want to follow those logs, and I want the last five logs. Here we go. And so now, if I try to kill the buffer, indeed, it's a running process. I am live, and I'm telling the last five lines. So I finally accomplished the experience I wanted, and I don't have to use my mouse anymore, which is great. Uh, let's kill that. Here we go. So with some time to spare, let's get to the conclusion. What did we see? What could be improved? So that's I'm sure I'm going to get some comments on that. Obviously, you should not use awk or some ugly command line arguments to get your list of pods. And while you have all those columns about the, your state of your pods, it would be nice to expand and have more than just the pod names in your Kubernetes mode. That's one thing. You also want, in general, better ha error handling. I said that if you summon the Kubernetes get logs command in not Kubernetes mode, you're going to have a problem. So let's, let's try to be better about that. Removing, obviously, all the hard-coded values allows some customization. So I said that you probably want a default tail mode, a default number of lines you're going to tail, or people are going to forget and they're just going to bust their very max session. And then it turns out it works pretty well with get logs. So why not expand and do a bunch of other services? So we can, we can describe pods, we can describe services. I even, so that's where I'm getting, I even actually expanded the logs to do uh, full deployments from Emacs to Kubernetes. Um, and then a bit, list of resources on what I just showed you. This entire org mode file is a, a gist, a gist, I don't know, whatever. It's, a, it's a out there, so I'll make sure that uh, it's posted in the, in the meetup. You can see all the notes. I also have the complete code of everything you just saw, but hopefully a little bit cleaner with every single Kubernetes function I implemented using that. If you want some doc on processes, it's inside Emacs. Uh, the transient manual, uh, although a bit dry, is very complete. It's up there. And then finally, a Kubernetes cheat sheet. And I don't know how to spell Kubernetes. All right. Uh, yeah, and I think that's pretty much it. So does anyone have any questions? Yo, what happened when it wasn't defined, or how did you fix that? Um, why it wasn't defined? Oh. oh. Uh, it's because I've been running this thing. It's because I've been running the presentation over and over, and there's probably some collision with the mode map. So actually, I deleted the, mo the, the mode map and I redefined it. All right. Then in that case, if we don't have any more questions, thank you, everyone.